Hi everyone and welcome. I'm Clarice and I have unpacked my go bag here today to show you what it is that I keep in my emergency bag, my bug out bag, my take it and get out bag, so that you know how to prep for an emergency. you might wonder what kind of scenario you could possibly get into that would require you to grab only one bag out of your entire house, the place where you feel safe, and evacuate at a moment's notice. Well, there are a couple of scenarios. Um, for one, a flood. Recently we've seen a couple of floods in South Africa and people have had water all over their house. Fire is another example of an emergency where you have to evacuate. Sometimes you've only got seconds to grab a bag and go. Um, civil unrest is an example. I'm sure you can think of a couple of reasons yourself. But today I have unpacked a bag here that um, I consider something that I could live out of for, let's say, 72 hours. I could possibly even go five days out of this bag um, and the reason why I've packed it this way we have before had to evacuate because of fire twice before actually in the past two years and that is what sparked um, the idea in our minds of packing go bags, packing bug out bags, something that you can grab and go in an emergency. Both times we're in the middle of the night uh, I think actually both times was around 2 o'clock in the morning that we had to evacuate. The second time there was no electricity. We couldn't see. It was pitch dark. So if you don't have an emergency light or you don't grab your cell phone and look around, you've got nothing to go by. And honestly, it doesn't matter how calm and collected you are in an emergency. When you don't know how long you have to pack your bags, or to gather your stuff or to get all of your family members and your pets in the house together it can be really difficult to decide what is a priority um, what gets left behind and what gets taken okay so in an emergency such as a fire you will need clothing you will need um, something to make shelter and you'll need to be able to gather water um, that goes for any emergency scenario really, anywhere that is not your home, that is not an urban area, that is not your usual environment, you will have to look for um, a shelter, food, water and fire is going to help you with thermoregulation and make sure that you can cook your food or boil your water. So those are really important things to consider. Of course, depending on the environment that you live in or the scenario that you're packing for, um, you might include different items in your bag and nothing that is here is my absolute recommendation for the brand that I've got here or for the specific item. It's really up to you. It is personal choice and personal preference and what you think is going to be needed and where you think you'll be bugging out or evacuating to. Okay, so our first consideration when packing a bag is more or less how long you think you're going to need to be able to survive out of that bag. You can get a 24 hour bag, you get 48 hour bag, 72 hour bags or something that can last you a bit longer and depending on that you're going to select a size bag. An example here is this bag. This is quite a small bag, it's nice because it looks civilian so in the case where there is civil unrest and you're evacuating through an urban area and you might come into contact with um, military forces, you will not look like you are a threat or a military person yourself. So this blends in quite nicely. Um, you can go quite far with this as well because it's, it's a small bag. It actually can be made quite heavy and on the note of heavy I'd recommend you don't pack a bag that weighs more than 15% of your own body weight. If you're really fit and you're really tough, 
um, and you think you can carry the weight then maybe 20 percent but you'll find that every little bit that you add to your bag can start to weigh a ton after walking a couple of kilometers another good recommendation pack your bag and take it out go hiking go take a walk with it see how far you get and how tired you get from carrying your bag the second bag that i've got here is a much bigger one this is a 65 liter hiking bag um, i use this size bag because i want a change of clothes in my bag so if in the middle of the night I get woken up and I'm in my PJs and I've got to run, I've got only one bag that I can grab, I've got 30 seconds to get out of the house, I can just take this bag and I've got a change of clothes, I've got decent shoes in it, I can live out of this bag for at least five days. I can look after my main needs like water, I can find food from this, I can make a shelter out of this bag. So that's really nice. When you do look at a bigger bag, what starts to become important, or even just a bag that gets a little bit heavy, is having a chest strap and having a waist strap like this over here. That just distributes the weight nicely and ensures that you're not overtaxing yourself and you can actually carry this. Um, the weight is distributed nicely across your back and across your hips. Any person who lives in your house with you should also have a bag of their own. Any children should have a little backpack with their name and their name tag on, their parents' contact information, so that if they get lost or if you get separated in an emergency, that your children can um, find other people and they can contact you and let you know uh, where they are. Right. So we said that there were a couple of priorities when it comes to surviving. So those would be finding shelter, finding water, food is important as well. Even though we can survive quite long without food, it is necessary to get those calories in. So don't underestimate what not being able to eat is going to do to your body and how much you're going to need that energy in an emergency. And then fire. Fire helps us to thermoregulate, it keeps us warm. We can cook our food on a fire. We can boil water on a fire and important to know that in an emergency that stream or that tap or that river that you know is usually drinkable might be contaminated so don't take that for granted. In my emergency bag in order to make fire I keep a couple of options. It's great to have a lighter but lighters don't always last very long and they're not that reliable in, fact, in, in the way that if they get wet or something happens to them or you lose them then that's all of your fire gone. So, I do keep a lighter. I also keep a couple of fire starters. You can add some natural material or some charred material that will help you to start a fire quite quickly. Um, so that if your environment is wet or flooded or it's been raining, you still have some tinder that you can start your fire with. Um, there is a lighter in here. You do get really nice waterproof lighter cases that you can use to keep your lighter waterproof. I like these little Ziploc bags. They are nothing in terms of weight. They're so useful. They have multiple uses. Little bags, little plastic bags are great. Um, although plastic not so great for the environment. So there's a little bit of a um, give and take there. Okay. Then what I find is a really reliable fire starter is something like this ferro rod. Often it is called a flint erroneously this is actually not a flint it's a ferrocerium rod it's a fire rod um, and these are really reliable to start a fire with so you just need something to scrape along the edge often the um, the spine of a knife if you have a 90 degree spine over there you can use the 90 degree spine this knife is probably my favorite knife for starting fire with it does not have a 90 degree spine but this is actually a diving knife but it's great for starting fire. I can get a very good spark with um, this sharp edge. This is a serrated edge over there. So you see it makes really nice spark there. So I use this knife to start fires with. It is my diving knife. It also lives in my bag. This, however, usually actually lives in my handbag. So on, he <coughs> on here I've also got a multi-tool. It's a Victorinox knife. 
it has got a serrated blade i know a lot of people like a smooth blade because what happens with a serrated blade is you have to actually sharpen in every serration um, i've got some smooth blades here as well this is also nice because it's got a wire bender so something useful there's no saw on here but there is an awl which makes it a good knife to keep as well any sewing that you have to do any gear repairs any tent repairs or clothing repairs you can use that to sew with although I do recommend keeping a designated sewing kit in your bag as well okay in terms of fire rods or ferro rods there are multiple options I think this one has a little bit more magnesium in it so it gives a bigger spark might light your tinder a little bit easier so there's that and then in some multi tools you also find all like um, combination tools should I call them like this is actually this is a foldable shovel which is great it is a little bit heavy it does make my bag heavy but I'm quite fit I can carry my bag quite far so I know that I'm going to be ca able to carry the contents that are in this bag so this shovel also has a um, ferro rod in it I think this is also a whistle if you want to be found depending on your environment and there's a little compass on the back so that's quite nice to keep so if you if you lose one it's good to have another one the same goes for blades always good to keep a secondary blade in your bag um, you never know the first one might break or you might lose it okay so I keep another knife this is actually a really nice carry-on knife um, it is a Mueller A lot of people prefer something like a Puko knife um, that's a little bit simpler plainer it's with a scandy grind this one doesn't have a scandy grind it's got a hollow grind in there which is quite nice for woodwork because it doesn't um, provide as much resistance on the wood so I find that little carving duties or little campsite duties are quite easy with this one and because it has a very slight um, edge there it is a little bit easier to sharpen so for first time knife users this is a nice go to something like this it's got a nice little thumb grip at the top as well so good to keep this one around it's nice and sharp I can keep it on my belt um, and it's relatively easy to conceal as well it's light it's also quite a well balanced blade that just means if you're not um, familiar with knives it just means that your blade and your handle are sort of equal weights in your hand so you don't have an imbalance when you're working with your blade okay this is not something that I would hammer or pummel into another piece of wood for the reason that the hollow grind makes that blade a little bit more likely to break if I am going to um, billet on it but this knife for example doesn't have the hollow grind it's got quite a thick blade over there I can use one log to hammer this into another log so something for every duty something for every task on here it's really up to you what you decide to keep then this is a really good axe um, it's relatively inexpensive actually nice to have something like this because you've got an axe and there's a saw in the back as well so if you need to get through a log and you've decided to go with the saw that's going to work better for you then the saw is in the back it also has a ferro rod in the top or in the case here there you go this one has been used to i don't know probably about 50 percent of its usual size so it's it's been through the fire excuse the pun So we've spoken a bit about fire um, we've spoken a bit about having a blade with you i think it's really important i carry one on me all the time everywhere i go in my car there's a multi-tool in my bag there's a blade um, wherever you go just for small little tasks you've got that on you on top of that i actually have had to cut myself loose with this blade before I was in an armed robbery, I was home alone and they broke in and tied me up and left me tied up. Lucky for me they forgot to take my knife, it was in my handbag and 
Not so easy to try and open up a blade behind your back and to cut your hands loose behind your back, but this is a nice narrow blade. Um, so managed to get free and came out alive. Okay. Uh, then coming back to shelter, having some rope, having a bit of paracord. This is, is quite a strong paracord. It is nice to have it in your bag. If you really need it or if you need to make a shelter you need to put up a ridge line or something like that for a top that is there it is handy to have that um, another item that I would say is important for shelter is having something like a little space blanket space blanket is nice also if you're lost and you're trying to signal this can be quite bright in the Sun so if there is a bit of sunshine out you can put this out you can hang it over you it's easy to spot from the air if there's a rescue party out looking for you okay very importantly water so we cannot go very long without water in an emergency you'll find you probably are more thirsty your body is going to need more um, resources as well so you'll probably find you drink more water generally as well when you're stressed I really like this canteen cup combination I searched far and wide for one that actually a nesting cup and a canteen that fit lately they sell them separately so make sure that if you buy the canteen and the cup separately that they actually fit into one another and that they then fit into your pouch this pouch can attach to one's belt which is quite nice and what I like about this is because both of them are aluminium I can put the canteen on the fire I can put the cup on the fire I can cook and drink water and boil water and I can do everything in these two so both of those go on the fire if you want to you can add something like this little pot um, this one's seen many uses before I used to go hiking with this it's great to have um, also cook in it eat from it gather water from it boil your water from it make tea that's also Alice and it's very lightweight both of these are lightweight items okay I recommend keeping just a little piece of cotton cloth in your bag keep it nearby your water bottle the reason why is when you do gather water from the river always remembering to put the your water bottle facing down river so you don't gather all of the things washing into your bottle but even so taking a cloth and just covering the front of your bottle is going to keep all of the bigger pieces of debris out of your water bottle and then I would recommend that you still boil your water clear water is not necessarily clean or drinkable water there are a couple of things that I've added in here that are just plain useful stuff good stuff to keep in any bag keep it wherever you go just have it on you or have it nearby um, so the first of those is a simple plastic bag if you cannot gather water from any water source there's no stream river you're in a very dry area you can make a solar still using a plastic bag that will definitely help you to gather water this also helps you to forage or gather things from your environment put them together keep things together um, or just keep wet things separate in your bag so that they don't make everything else wet in your bag on that note um, having a dry bag something like this in your go bag with all of your passports, permits, identification, um, animals, permits, all of the people who live with you, um, important documents. I actually keep all of those things in my go bag so that if there is an emergency and I don't have time to think about what I'm going to take and leave all of my important documents in a bag and I can just take my stuff and get out and I'm cool. I've got everything that's important to me this is a nice lightweight one you get a more heavy duty kind of fabric but I find that it weighs your bag up a little bit more so so it, it adds weight to your bag and then you end up with all these containers like little plastic containers glass containers are very heavy so just consider putting all of these things in separate containers is actually going to add weight to your bag unnecessarily that's why plastic packets or little zip seal packets are great because they are so lightweight 
Um, the other function of this guy is if you have to cross a river and you need to inflate something or just keep an inflatable something on you or there's a child nearby and you need to help a child across a body of water you can actually inflate this seal it up and you've got like a little inflatable buoy to get you across the river a lot of people have used their clothes um, taken their pants or their shirt or their jacket um, inflated wet it and inflated and it keeps a little bit of air inside that is a good idea in theory in practice it doesn't always pan out as people have planned it um, if you lose the air halfway down the river, then you are just dragging your clothes through the river with you. But this is good to keep on you. And then the other things that I really recommend, carabiners. I keep one of my keys in my car, on my bag. These are great if you suddenly need to get something out of your hands to clear your hands for another task. Having a carabiner around that you can just clip something onto, hang it up, um, that frees your hands up really quickly. And also you can connect your things. If you have one little bag, so here's another one over here. This is a, a, um, a camping hammock and there's a carabiner on there as well. It's got a quilt. So if I quickly need to put the two together, there is an option to do that. I have made up a tiny little container of what well, I call fishing equipment. Um, so there are some fishing hooks in here, some swivels, some sinkers. I've got some fishing line. So if I really need to try and catch fish and I don't have the option of going to a supermarket or going to a shop, if I'm out and about in the wilderness, then I've got the option to try and catch fish, um, to fish for dinner. This is going to also depend on where you live. So if you live in a really urban environment, then you probably will find it's easier to forage for food, to go and scout around and, and gather resources. We don't live in an urban area, we live in a little village. So for us, if we evacuate, it's 10 paces out across the road and we're in the bush already. So I do have a little bit more um, rural, wilderness sort of orientated items in my bag. Okay, another thing I would really recommend is a sewing kit. If you have a shelter that has torn or you've got clothes that have ripped, you can easily repair them to keep them from ripping any further. I've got some buttons in here and safety pins and a couple of adjusters. And then a good idea is to keep your needle inside the thread so it doesn't poke out or injure someone or injure yourself. To add to that, I have got a simple nail kit. I really this is actually quite an old one but you can just sharpen everything up it's good to keep sharp nail scissors around that helps you with wound care I've got some extra needles and safety pins in here and tweezers the other thing that is um, great on a multi-tool on a knife is it's also got a pair of tweezers on it so if I lose this one or if I have to dump my gear because it's too heavy I can't carry it far enough or I can't go where I want to go with the bag and all the stuff that I've got then I have that on the multi-tool as well okay further to that it's nice to have a compass in your bag if you are lost or if you are traveling through the wilderness and every mountain looks like the previous mountain which looks like the next mountain at least you can try not to go in circles um, although when you're disoriented and when you're tired and you're out of your normal environment don't feel bad if you get lost it happens to the best of us but if you don't have a compass having a map of the area or at least good knowledge of the area that you live in or what the terrain looks like is a great idea. I keep these maps and a notepad and pencil and piece of paper inside my waterproof bag. So if I end up in water, these will stay dry along with all my important documents. And I can make notes and um, recall or record where I have found certain food sources, where I have seen tracks of animals, where I remember seeing a road or anything that's really important to me that I feel that is worthwhile remembering or noting down I can make note of if you don't have a compass even if you're not going to go buy a compass you can actually navigate using a analog watch a lot of people don't wear analog watches anymore we're very reliant on 
electricity and our GPS watches and those are really great to have but in a scenario where there is no electricity you are going to be out of a watch and this is great for telling direction we'll do a separate video on navigating and how to tell direction using an analog watch and the Sun speaking of Sun there are very few toiletries in this bag the one thing that I really would recommend is sunblock because having severe sunburn constitutes a medical um, situation or a, a medical condition. The sun and dehydration and sunstroke can severely disorientate you and make you very ill and keep you from actually being able to survive on your own. So really important to make sure that you've got some sunblock or that you've got clothes that are UV protective um, something to cover yourself with I've also got a lip balm in here this is a nice balm also just for um, small injuries, scrapes and grazes just something soothing and lastly a little bit of camping soap so I'm going to talk about clothing just now and the clothes that I've chosen to put in my bag to keep a set of clothes in my bag but this camping soap is to keep your underlayer clean. So your, your closest layer to your skin is going to be kept clean. Don't carry a lot of toiletries with you. They are going to be very heavy. You're going to run out of toiletries anyway. If you cannot get to a shop to replenish your toiletries, you probably don't need them. There are just a few more things that are important to me in my bag that I keep. These are just cable ties. I've got two different sizes here. I've got a smaller size and I've got a bigger size. And Juniper. Okay, so the point Juniper is trying to make is that if there is an emergency, she's not going to get left behind. She's absolutely right. She's got her own bag. So. This is a nice pet carrier that I found. Um, there's a, a relatively big space in here. There's a little net that I can cover um, her with without actually blocking her off from me. She gets scared if, if we get scared, so she likes to see me then. Um, this is a nice bag also. It is a, a backpack as well. It's a great backpack. It does have a chest strap, which really does help to just distribute that weight and it takes the pressure off of your shoulders it's got some extra compartments as well that I can keep personal gear in so if I need to take a knife with me or something like that or just something small or we're just going to the vet and I'm going to put my phone in here then this is a great bag to have you can get through a Dakar rally with cable ties and duct tape as we've seen recently so definitely worthwhile keeping possibly not the best color depending on whether you're trying to be stealthy or whether you're trying to hide out white might not be the best there are different colors of duct tape and there are different colors of cable ties so um, if you're making a shelter and you're hunting or you don't want to be obvious then choose the colors that work for you I have a flashlight on here um, largely because if you really do need to get light then you do have a light with you so that you can see especially if you're trying to get out of a building and it's dark or you don't know the environment that you're in or you're scared of stepping into a ditch while you're evacuating nice to just have a torch with you or something that can make light while you're on the move obviously anything that you shine a light on is going to illuminate your environment and it's also going to illuminate you so if you're trying to be stealthy and you don't want to be seen better to just keep the lights off or try and get a, a light that's or a little headlamp that's got a red light on it those are really great so as we're getting to clothing these are some buffs that I've got um, buffs are great in a fire you can wet them put them over your mouth um, to keep you from inhaling smoke they also protect your head and neck in the Sun and they can keep you warm as well so really good to have some buffs more than one is is great as well this one is good for signaling if you need help you can add different colors buffs if you want to 
Um, also, in the in the scenario where I just want to look like a civilian, having something pink makes me look like I'm not a very big threat at all. Okay, gloves, not just to keep you warm, but if you need to do something that might be abrasive on your skin or on your hands, great to have these around just to add that little bit of protection, just a small layer of protection. You can add some um, more durable gloves. Welding gloves are fantastic for any sort of outdoor job, building a shelter or just gathering wood or anything like that. Um, welding gloves are great. You can actually get short ones as well and then they won't add so much weight to your bag. I've got a hat here. A lot of people will say add a beanie. Um, I think that if I've got two buffs and a hat, I can keep my head warm with that, so I don't need to add anything else, but completely up to personal preference. If you really like to have a beanie, or if you're in an environment where it snows or it's super, super cold, definitely go ahead and add a woolen layer. So I've just got a scarf here as well. If I need to cover anything, build a shelter, um, gather materials, this is really great. I can just use this, open it up and close it up. It's it's not heavy, doesn't add a lot of weight to my bag. Very useful and versatile to have this. Also, if I don't have tinder and I'm trying to make a fire in the environment's wet, I can use a piece of this to try and light it. Um, on that note, toilet paper is fantastic tinder. If you're struggling to make a fire and you can't find anything to get it started, grab some toilet paper. Okay, in terms of clothing, it is good to have four different layers of clothing in your bag. So I would say having an underlayer that wicks away perspiration is a good start. So something like a cotton shirt or a cotton pair of shorts that will um, be comfortable for long periods of time, that won't um, be abrasive on your skin is good. So I've got a t-shirt there. I have a layer of clothing here that kind of skips the second layer so the second layer I would say is something long and warm especially in a cold condition maybe a polo neck or a long sleeve shirt that just covers your major vessels and keeps you warm has a little bit of insulation your third layer is mainly your insulating layer so that's where I would say keep a woolen jumper or your beanie and then your outer layer um, is something that will dry quickly or something that is waterproof so these clothes that I have, I really swear by these. This is Crag Hoppers. They make a um, insect repellent fabric that can keep ticks and mosquitoes and stuff away from you. So if you are prone to getting charred by the mozzies, that is really good to keep. I really like their stuff as well. It's very practical. Lots of pockets, lots of little extra hooks and ties and place for you to stash your most necessary gear. I also have a pair of shorts in the event that it is really hot and I'm going to forego my long pants, go with sunblock rather, and a pair of shorts. Those are going to be the ones. Then I have a really good waterproof jacket. I think this one is 12,000 millimeters waterproof. You can go for something like a snowboarding jacket or a pair of snowboarding pants, waterproof pants. You get nice soft shell ones as well. That will definitely help you if you are in an environment where it tends to rain on short notice. Then we get to shelter. You don't have to keep a tent or a sleeping bag in your bag. If you have a decent layer of clothes on you, that is already something that you can sleep in that will keep you warm. You can always make a bed wherever you are out of the natural and, um, materials in your environment. I have this one on my bag. It is not inside my bag. It is clipped on. The reason why is if my bag gets too heavy, if I really need to run and I really need to move fast and I cannot carry the weight for an extended period of time, I can dump this. I know that I'm okay without this. Depending on what your bushcraft skills are going to be like, what your survival skills are like, how skilled you are, you're going to maybe pack different things in your bag. So the more skilled you are in bushcraft, the more skilled you are in survival, the less equipment you'll need. I personally am not very strong, so I know that I need some things that will help me to lever um, 
maybe I need to leave a log to make a shelter or I need to free myself from somewhere then I really am going to need something that's going to be able to add strength to me so I have some other things here that will help me this shelter this is a camping hammock actually it's great because it elevates you it keeps you off the ground um, that also helps to keep you dry as well as warm it comes with a quilt you don't need to keep this in your bag you can omit this you can dump it put it in there you know what if if you are going to pack a quite big bag then have one pocket or one area or compartment in your bag of stuff that you know that you can actually go without and that you can drop on your way this has a tarpaulin in it that I know is great for a shelter in itself so even if I don't have the space to set up a hammock I don't have two trees I can make it into a tent I've added some extra tent pegs in here so I'm okay for making it into a tent it's nice because it makes a low profile tent so if there's a hectic wind or you're trying to um, immerse yourself in your environment and you don't want to be found or you don't want to be able to be spotted easily having a low profile tent is really great you do get pop-up tents i don't know how versatile they are i don't know how durable they are but you can try them and see even if you don't have a tent just having a tarpaulin or something that you can roll yourself in i actually have done that i've slept through two thunderstorms alone in the bush by myself just rolled up in a tarpaulin i've used a rope i just tied off the one end and i was on a downhill slope i couldn't move from where i was and what i did was just rolled myself and my gear up in that um, ground sheet and i stayed super dry i slept like a log as well <laughs> okay this has some extra straps and um, attachments in it so i can use those as well for whatever I need them for even if I'm not going to use them to set up a hammock and like I said this really is just personal preference I have got a tracking pole um, that is attached to my bag I find that it's very versatile it helps me in many many different scenarios the idea behind a tracking pole is just to give you a little bit more stability so if you're on a hike or you're walking somewhere and you just want you're, you're covering rocky terrain or unstable terrain you've got something in your hand you've got a staff in your hand that will help you balance across that terrain this one's really cool it's also a crag hoppers um, item like I said really like this stuff but you can decide what it is that you like best so this one extends to 135 centimeters which is really long for a trekking pole um, it also has other uses if you are in an environment where you cannot fish but you can spear something it's nice and easy to add something like um, this diving knife of mine which has these holes in the tang here to the bottom of your pole and you can make a spear out of that for that reason it's a good idea to keep some paracord as well you get cool paracord that you can take apart and you've got smaller threads and a fishing line and a wire i don't have that here right now but anything really you can actually make your own cord in the bush as well another really important thing to have in your go bag is a emergency first aid kit you can decide the size of the first aid kit that you keep but there are a couple of essential things that i'd really recommend have a tourniquet in there have some gauze um, or something to staunch bleeding in there have just plain dressings um, wound dressings plasters gauze dressings so that you can cover a wound if you're not near medical help and you can't get medical help and you urgently need to just close up a wound and keep it from getting infected or clean it you need to be able to do that out of your first aid kit other things that a first aid kit should have is something that you can clean the wound with an antiseptic ointment or an antiseptic um, liquid uh, that will really help you to just get the worst of the grime and of the dirt out of the wound and perhaps keep a couple of um, paracetamols or a couple of anti-inflammatories in there just so that if you need to treat a fever or antihistamines even so that you can just get yourself to medical help
On the topic of shoes, I always keep a good pair of shoes in my go bag. The reason why is if I don't have time to go rummaging through a cupboard looking for my hiking boots, I know there's a decent pair of shoes that will get me through the felt um, when there is an emergency. These are also Crag Hoppers ones. I really like these because they've got a good grippy rubber sole. They've got a high ankle guard. This will protect your ankle and keep you from ankle injuries or sprains. Something like that can really slow you down. And if you're um, on the move and you're on the trail, the last thing you want is an injury that's going to keep you behind. They've also had a really good idea. They've made what they call a crawler guard, which is cool because you can stuff that into the tongue here when you're wearing them. And what they do is they keep creepy crawlies out of your shoes when you're not wearing them. If you don't have something like a crawler guard, you can use a buff or you can use a sock. Just cover the top of your shoe and make sure that nothing gets in there. Um, otherwise, put a stake in the ground and put your shoes upside down. That will keep most of the creepy crawlies out of your shoes. You still need to check them though before you put them back on, just in case. Rather be safe than sorry. Alright, well that's it and I really hope that this has helped you. I really hope that um, you're going to consider packing a go bag if you don't have one. Pack an emergency bag just so that you are prepared for any emergency that gets thrown at you and that you can grab your bag and get out and be safe.